the machine doesn't want to give you the traffic. It's giving it all to somebody else. You've got to sell the machine first and then you can show your ad to the human. A little personal anecdote on what you're saying. I started actually with SEO long before paid ads in like 07. And I remember our first site was a real estate investing site. A friend of mine had written a course on some short sales he was doing in Florida. So we wrote a short sale course and I went after like the biggest, most broad keywords because that just made the most sense to me. And so it took me a long time, took me over a year, but I remember we ranked for the keyword real estate investing. We would kind of bounce between number one and number three, but like Google would send us 2000 visitors a month every and I was lucky to convert one of those people. I knew nothing about converting traffic back in those days. And I remember I just got the idea that I needed more traffic like most people. And so I went after a keyword. And it was almost an afterthought. But I was like, well, we have a short sale course. Let's try and rank for short sale course. And there was only like 100 or 200 people a month who searched it. And I would get 15 to 20 conversions out of that like clockwork, even though like the amount of traffic compared to it, but you know, just that one word course changed the buyer yeah, intent yeah. so much. And if you look at the pure vanity metrics, it's easy to say like six, 60,000 visitors a month versus 200, but they're coming with a very different frame of mind and very different intention, a very different reason of being there. And so, uh, you know, like you said, use that data to feed the machine and identify who are those 15 people who just bought it. So coming back to the feeding the data of the machine, another picture I want to put in people's mind is most people just think about their customer, right? And everybody obsesses over creative and what's the ad that the customer, the prospect is going to see. The first customer we all have is the machine. Because if you don't first convince the machine to show your ad, the human on the other end never gets to see the ad. Yeah. You are marketing to the machine first and foremost. And that, that means, yes, you're think about attribution, but data. If your data isn't right. If your data isn't what the machine needs, if you can't sell the machine on sell it, showing your ad compared to someone else's ad, it doesn't matter how good your bloody video script was because no one's actually going to go see that because the machine doesn't want to give you the traffic. It's giving it all to somebody else. You've got to sell the machine first and then you can show your ad to the human. Amazing. Uh, one last thing, if we, if we got a, a little bit of time here, I don't want to keep you too long. I, know I, I can go as long as you need. No, it's all right. Amazing, mate. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit just about campaign settings. I know this is a little bit of a moving target because we got performance max today and who knows what it'll be tomorrow. But I would love your thoughts just on, on how you see different campaign settings. Like when, you, when you're when you setting up stuff, like, you know, how do you even approach that? Well, I have an amazing team that do all of that stuff and I haven't set up a campaign in quite a while, so I may not be able to answer that question. <laughs> um, That's the best answer, I, the email. <laughs> that's the systemized version that's yeah. the honest truth i don't i don't know what the what the buttons are in there these days be very careful of anything that that looks grayed out but but isn't um mike ryan put an amazing post up just a couple of weeks ago on linkedin about that where there are a couple of settings that look like they've been grayed out but those ticks can actually be re removed from the box like mm. google have a team last number i heard was 47 47 behavioral psychologist type people and I've seen a talk by the, the lady that leads that team. She's amazing. Um, she spoke at a couple of um, Google Live events in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, in the before times. GA4 is a great example of this. I'm not sure if your listeners are familiar with Google Analytics 4. You go into your property settings. There's a thing there called reporting identity. It changes how your reports are shown and if stuff's thresholded or not. Long story. It doesn't matter. Essentially, there are two options. And then there's a little box underneath that that says show all. So you're looking at two options on the screen, but this little show all thing, you're thinking, well, geez, there must be loads of options then. They've hidden all of this to make it easy to read. You hit show all, one extra thing appears. There are literally three things on this list, and they've yeah. chosen to hide one with this little seal. That doesn't happen by accident, right? A geek, an engineer isn't going to do that because it's inefficient. Why are you requiring all these extra button presses? That's the behavioral psychology department at work going, well, we want to nudge people over here. We want them to do this. And it that's the bit that shits me is just how much they use that stuff on us, the practitioners who are just trying to get a good result out of the machine. I just find things like that just so silly and so frustrating, like having a grayed out tick box yeah, can yeah. be unticked, but you're making it visually look like it can't. That's just, yeah. you know, 
we're a long, long way from don't be evil, aren't we, at this stage? So, no, but um, actually, we uh, we just had a talk with Kasim Azlam, who you may know, who is saying mm-hmm. that, um, you know, like uh, Facebook's kind of already gone that direction where they've basically taken away all the targeting settings and that it's just going to be AI and you just have to feed it to the machine and, and Google's going to, you're just basically going to give it your credit card and it's going to be as close to. I've been saying that for 15 years. That's, that's, that's what they're heading towards credit card in one end and maybe the feed out of zero on the other end and just leave it to us. We'll do everything in the middle. Yeah. And I think we're further away than that than Google would like. And there's very few of us are actually going to embrace that when it comes, but they're going to keep heading there, chipping away bit by bit, changing bits of the UI, simplifying it, dumbing it down, not removing control because none of us really crave control. We don't, none of us want to go back to fiddling with bids three days a week, yeah. like in the old days. But we do miss the ability to have insights. We miss the data because we can use those insights in other parts of our business, in our other marketing, elsewhere in the business as a whole. Like we need the data in order to have insights. And I think the way engineering look at that is, well, if you can't take action, what's the point in having the data? You can't do anything in these like automated campaigns like Pmax. But you can. There are there are things that you can do. There are things that you can change. We would love to be able to change it and then see what happens. That's I wrote the script, Emacs stuff. But yes, that's where Google wanted to get to, right? Give us a credit card, get out of the way, silly little human. Leave it to us. Yeah. Speaking of, by the way, since you said you're a bad marketer earlier, <laughs> I, I always find that funny because I really find the best people at this like break the alleged rules that all the internet marketers say you have to do and generally just have an abundance mi- mindset and want to see other mm. people win and when they give away stuff like we've all find it it, it finds a way back to you in other forms mm. and so i love that you're just taking your best stuff and just giving it away i know you could like gate it i know you could make it a 29.99 a month recurring whatever but um you know especially like you know, like i understand the hatred of the tech i really do like i actually we we run a Facebook ads agency, and for a, a large part of that, like I don't touch any Facebook ads. I don't push any buttons. I understand the strategy behind it, but I just like I'm with you. Like I don't want to touch any of those settings at all. Yeah, well, that's what you have a team for, right? So, and they're brilliant. They they, they know it better than yeah. I do in in many cases, and certainly much more up to date with it than I'm. Guys, if you like this video, you're also going to want to grab some free bonuses, which you can get at our website, Beyond Agency Profits, to make it easy for you. I've put the links to it in the description of this video, as well as pinned in the top comment. And we've got a couple of awesome things. This is what you'll get after you sign up. You get some of our best training, how we're closing clients over Loom videos, how we sometimes sign clients. That is not a misprint for under five U.S. dollars. Uh, how to demonstrate your value in like amazing ways, trainings, how to have your clients write the best copy of your life, how we're closing without phone calls, campaigns that we've generated for clients for, that have done over $100,000, as well as scripts you can use to get conversations going with clients in under 10 minutes. All you got to simply do is go there, enter your name and email address, and then this is what you'll see on the other side. So if that's interesting to you, make sure to click the links below and I will see you on the other side.